Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Bootlicker shows definitely serves puzzle puzzles minions. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to go to Syria and talk about Kobani. Well, Kobani, Kobani Syria is a, a Turkish town in the north part of Syria, just on the border with Turkey. And uh, it has been a, a safe haven, relatively speaking, for our Kurds through the Syrian Civil War. But just like the uh, ISIS assault on the Kurds, finally, um, turning on the Kurds in Iraq, uh, we have the ISIS forces now uh, turning on uh, the Kurds. And I first reported on this a couple weeks ago because it was a major event that ISIS uh, was concentrating on its major foes uh, before uh, turning on the Kurds, who they had sort of an understanding with up to a point. Although certainly in Syria, uh, ISIS and other uh, Al-Qaeda-associated uh, Al forces uh, who had been unleashing atrocities on Syria, on Kurdish on Kurds in Syria, for the last four years. And uh, we haven't really heard too much about that, although I've uh, been diligent trying to report on these events. And uh, so now we have uh, what appears to be the inevitable fall of Kobani, and uh, potentially a massacre of the Kurdish fighters that are left there. Uh, 160,000 some odd uh, civilians have already flo uh, fled the city and are now living in Turkey. Um, and, uh, and of course the, the pivotal uh, point here being that the Turkish military is actually uh, in Turkey looking on, on the events going on in Kobani. And they have a, a massive armored uh, unit and forces on the border there and they are doing nothing to uh, help the Kurds in Kobani. And uh, so this makes it a very dramatic event, particularly when, uh, if and when, there is retribution against the uh, remaining fighters there. And uh, so one of the reasons why this is going to have uh, huge implications uh, is because it will be a, a, a break, a huge break between the Kurds and Turkey, I, I would suspect, uh, if the Kurds feel that the uh, Turks uh, stood by and did nothing, and there was a massacre in Kobani, uh, it would be hard for the Kurds to forgive, and that will be Kurds throughout the region. And we're already seeing some of the results of that. We have uh, Kurds uh, demonstrating protests and violent protests in several major cities in Turkey right now. And incidentally, we actually have Kurds all over the world uh, protesting about Western inaction, including. Uh, Kurdish protesters storming the European Parliament in Brussels, uh, as well as uh, Kurdish protesters in, in Hamburg, Germany, uh, being attacked by pro-ISIS supporters uh, with machetes and, and knives and sticks. And uh, so this is a, uh, has a global presence, but I'm not surprised. Uh, there's some 60 million, I believe, uh, Kurds living uh, around the world. Uh, they, they're the largest single ethnic group now without its own country my understanding. So uh, so anyway, uh, this will change the whole dynamic. Um, uh, and one of the reasons why Turkey has this problem is because they have a, a Kurdish population in their own country that they've been struggling with uh, for decades and um, uh, nearly a century. And uh, the, the PKK is the armed wing of the Turkish Kurds and they're labeled a terrorist group by both the United States and Turkey. And uh, the United States is actually working with the PKK in Iraq, uh, but Turkey and the United States find it somewhat more problematic dealing with those same elements in Syria for, for some odd reason. And uh, But a, a lot of it is just the, uh, the um, complexity and hypocrisy of U.S. Uh, and Western treatment of the Kurds in, in Iraq and in Syria. They, the Kurds in Syria have been all but abandoned, and this will prove that point. And um, where there was a no-fly zone uh, created to protect uh, the Kurds from uh, Saddam Hussein, and now we have the U.S. finally st stepping in not to protect Iraq, but to protect Kurdistan, uh, and yet we still have this continued abandonment of the Kurds in Syria. And we hear about all these uh, atrocities, these outrageous atrocities uh, in uh, Iraq, and it's used to escalate these events, and yet we've had a string of uh, all these same atrocities uh, in Syria for four years, 
including uh, several massacres of Kurds there, but uh, still nothing was done. So we're going to have a we're going to have a reevaluation by the Kurds uh, of their relationship to the situation in, in Syria, and certainly whether they would participate. Uh, there would probably be no chance they would participate in any effort to topple Assad at this point. And I would imagine that the Kurds in, in Iraq are going to reevaluate their situation. And, uh, and that's going to be very complex because Turkey has a very strong relationship with the Kurds in, in Iraq. And uh, Kurdistan has a lot of investment there, a lot of uh, interest there, a lot of strategic interest there. Having Kurdistan as a buffer zone, um, that will all come into uh, question, as well as the, the ongoing negotiations between Turkey, Turkish government, and the Kurds in Turkey. Um, this this uh, whole arrangement there could uh, find itself breaking down uh, with the fall of Kobani and any atrocities that it might come along with that. So along with the change of the relationship that uh, Turkey and the Kurds have, uh, which is going to be very dynamic, and it's really going to have a huge effect on the whole dynamic of that region and all these strategies, uh, what we also see is a very, a very, very evident failure of current U.S. strategy. Uh, certainly we've heard that airstrikes are not uh, being very effective, and, and we certainly find that to be the case in Kobani, although it sounds like the number of uh, 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 airstrikes in, in the region was a, a handful at best, um, which will also reinforce the idea that the coalition in the United States has abandoned the Kurds, has abandoned Kobani. And um, so, but uh, like I say, uh, first we focus in on the failure of this strategy and what it could possibly achieve. But uh, that's one of the areas where we have to examine that strategy because uh, perhaps there's a strategy behind the strategy, because the, the fact of the matter is uh, ISIS is armed with heavy uh, artillery, which is very easy to spot, um, and it's hard to hide. And we have uh, uh, heavy tanks, which are also easy to spot and hard to hide. And uh, feasibly, the United States, with little effort, uh, could actually take out uh, all of that equipment in one day um, if they applied themselves. And it really wouldn't take that much, but that wasn't done. So that's a, another very serious question about the fall of Kobani and this entire U.S. strategy, uh, and certainly the uh, Turkey strategy as well. And uh, and then we also have the the idea that the Kurds are the ones on the ground, uh, whether they're the PKK or the YPG or the Peshmerga, uh, all of them are on the ground doing the hard work. And so it's a rather ironic that... Uh, uh, the Iraqi army has failed. Uh, the so-called uh, Free Syrian Army in Syria has failed. And the only people taking care of business on the ground, uh, protecting uh, Western interests and uh, taking on ISIS head-on and, and doing a good job of it, um, is the Kurds. And uh, so all the more ironic that they're the ones getting betrayed. And uh, so it makes the, to, to my eyes, it makes the likelihood of justifying independence uh, all the more likely uh, because it's Kurdish blood that's being spilled and uh, they're uh, in a lot of ways being uh, abandoned by the West although certainly uh, the West is stepping up their efforts uh, to help the Kurds in, in, in Iraqi Kurdistan and those uh, uh, those efforts are uh, making some achievements but uh, this abandonment of the Kurds in Syria um, is, a, is a big matter and um, another result of this, of course, is we're going to have a, a rather huge continuous border between ISIS uh, caliphate and Turkey, uh, somewhat like a 500-mile uh, long uh, stretch uh, that they will share. So that will be interesting to see uh, what the dynamic will be there. Uh, Turkey is right on the border now, uh, so we can see uh, clashes. We know that uh, some of Turkey's conditions for uh, uh, authorizing uh, military action in this uh, campaign is the idea of creating a buffer zone um, or a, uh, a no-fly zone and or both. Um, so let's see what happens when uh, ISIS uh, comes uh, border to border uh, with Turkey. Um, certainly that's going to make things a lot more complex too. So anyway, um, I guess we will watch and see now. Unfortunately, it will be in slow 
uh, painful motion that uh, we see the fall of Kobani and uh, unfortunately we can expect um, the worst and uh, as I said on many of my videos my, uh, my heart does go out to all my Kurdish friends and those who hear me say that may uh, scratch their heads but it's the, the fact that I've uh, been doing uh, videos about Kurd, the Kurds and the Kurdish cause in Kurdistan uh, for quite a, a couple of years now and um, I've had the good fortune to have a lot of Kurds uh, respond to my videos and uh, I've had uh, wonderful interactions uh, with so many of you and you know who you are um, 91 Music Boy being my first and uh, uh, my heart goes out to all of you my Kurdish friends that have to uh, watch this and um, there we have it um, so I'll probably uh, end up doing another video uh, when Kobani falls uh, unfortunately with what I always call the gruesome details I'm a useful idiot don't you be one too